Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Management TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Good day everyone and this is Azzy News for today with me Vanessa. Hospitals in Indonesia treat COVID-19 patients in corridors after cases increase. The Red Cross says Indonesia's COVID-19 surge is on the edge of catastrophe as the more infectious Delta variant dominates transmission and chokes hospitals in Southeast Asia's worst epidemic. Indonesia reports record daily COVID-19 infections of more than 20,000 in recent days in a new wave of infections fueled by the emergence of highly transmissible virus variants and increased mobility after the Muslim fasting month of Ramadan. Hospitals in several designated red zones areas have reported overcapacity, including the capital Jakarta, with its isolation beds 93% occupied. A nurse working at a state-run hospital in North Jakarta says there were COVID-19 patients who died while waiting for a hospital bed. Young Galfant, head of Indonesia's delegation of the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Society, says the Delta variant was driving Indonesia closer to a COVID-19 catastrophe. Indonesia is banking on mass vaccinations to get on top of the virus, but only 13.3 million of the 181.0 million targeted for inoculation have received the required two doses. Oxygen demand continues increases in Indonesia as COVID-19 cases soar in the country. Customers visit an oxygen shop in the capital city of Jakarta, even though oxygen prices are higher, but demand for oxygen continues increases in Indonesia as COVID-19 cases soar in this country. All hospitals aging towards full capacity, a growing number of patients are being turned away and asked to self-isolate at home instead, feeling a rush to buy oxygen. Indonesia reports record daily COVID-19 infections of more than 20,000 in recent days in a new wave of cases fueled by the emergence of highly transmissible virus variants and increased mobility after the Muslim fasting month, Ramadan. The country is banking on mass vaccinations as a means of tackling the virus, but only 13.3 million of the 181.5 million targeted for inoculation have received the required two doses since January. Activists and families of victims of the drug war protests ask justice for Duterte before his end of power. Hundreds of activists, along with families of drug war victims, protest near the presidential palace in the Philippines' capitals as Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte enters his final year in office. Activists march in Manila, call justice for thousands that have been killed. Meanwhile, human rights groups accused Duterte of inciting deadly violence and say police have murdered unarmed suspects and staged criminal scenes on a massive scale. Philippine authorities say over 6,100 suspected drug dealers have been killed in the five years of the campaign, all of whom violently resisted arrest. A prosecutor from the International Criminal Court asked authorization this month to open a full investigation into the killings, saying crimes against humanity could have been committed. In addition, his spokesperson says in March 2018, Duterte, as person who cancelled the Philippines' membership of the ICC's founding treaty, will not cooperate with the probe in rejecting the ICC prosecutor's findings. Phuket Island Thailand Resort reopens to tourists after lockdown due to pandemic.
vaccinated foreign tourists arrive at the Thailand resort island of Phuket, the first to return to the country's beaches and golf courses under a pilot program to review tourism industry devastated by novel coronavirus. The Phuket Sandbox plan foreign tourists vaccinated against COVID-19 will not have to spend any time in quarantine and can move around the island freely after 14 days, provided that the three coronavirus tests they must take are negative, they can travel elsewhere in the country. Millions of people visited Phuket every year before the pandemic and the tourism industry ministry hopes the reopening will help save its battered economy. Thailand lost about $50 billion in tourism revenue last year as foreign arrivals plunged 80% to 6.7 million from a record 39.9 million in 2019. While Phuket has seen few COVID-19 cases ahead of its reopening, Thailand reports a daily record of 57 deaths from the coronavirus, the second day in a row of record high fatalities as authorities struggle to control a worrying third wave of infections. The latest deaths take Thailand total fatalities to 2080 since the pandemic started last year. The COVID-19 task force also reported 5,530 new coronavirus cases, bringing the total number of infections to 264,834. Myanmar destroys narcotics and precursor chemicals on International Anti-Drugs Day. Myanmar ceremonially inserted seized narcotic drugs and precursor chemicals marking the International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking. Drugs including more than 2,560 kg of heroin, 3,870 kg of opium, 730 kg of marijuana and other precursor chemicals are burned in Yangon, Mandalay and Taungi. According to statistics, the Myanmar police force cracks 13,960 drug cases arrested, 19,994 suspects, and seized 119 kinds of drugs worth roughly 1 billion US dollars. From the beginning of the year to May 31, 2021, the country cracked 2,833 drug cases, arrested 4,077 suspects, and seized drugs worth about 200 million United States dollars. Deputy Police Chief of North District of Drug Enforcement Division, Hlawai, says the comprehensive prohibition of drugs cannot rely on the police alone. All citizens should cooperate with the anti-drugs efforts of the country to deal with the drug problem. The ceremonial events are the 34th large-scale drug incineration in Myanmar. In recent years, international cooperation in drug prohibition Myanmar has been stepping up efforts to crack down on drug production and trafficking and achieved positive results. China certifies malaria-free by the World Health Organization after four years without reporting any cases in the country. The director of the World Health Organization Malaria Program, Pedro Alfonso, says the World Health Organization announces that China certifies malaria-free after four years without reporting any cases. The certification of, of a malaria In 2019, the World Health Organization reports an estimated 2021 million cases of malaria, a complex infection caused by a parasite carried in the saliva of mosquitoes worldwide and 419,000 deaths. While 94% of the cases in the world are reported in the Africa region and the WHO estimates that 730 million people in the Western Pacific region are at risk of the infection. Alfonso adds China is the first country in the region in decades to fully eliminate the transmission of the disease and the risk remains. The Thailand government greets to visitors from Singapore after Phuket reopens to tourists. The Prime Minister greets visitors arriving from Singapore before he returns to Bangkok. Tourists are greeted with rounds of applause by Thai officials, some ask to take pictures and selfies with the Thailand leader.
Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha, who flew to the island to oversee the reopening and thank officials and health workers, stressing the success of Phuket will pave the way for a larger reopening of Thailand's border scheduled for October. Hundreds of vaccinated foreign tourists arrive on the Thai resort island of Phuket as the first visitors to its beaches and golf courses under a pilot program designed to revive a tourism industry devastated by the pandemic. The government says almost 400 people are expected to arrive in Phuket on the first day that flights resumed from Israel, Abu Dhabi, Qatar and Singapore. Millions of people visited Phuket every year before the pandemic and the government and tourism industry hope the reopening will help save its battered economy. Activists and lawmakers are calling for reforms to the country's military justice system. Activists and lawmakers are calling for reforms to the country's military justice system after a South Korean Air Force Master Sergeant accused a colleague of sex abuse and killed in May. The victim's family and defense ministry officials said after the Air Force Chief Sergeant reported that she had been harassed by a colleague in March, his supervisor tried to cover it up and forced her into settlement and the military persecutor was dragged out of the investigation for almost two months but never called the attacker for questioning. Meanwhile, a former Marine Corps captain who now works as a human rights advocate in Seoul says she was also sexually abused while serving but decided not to report in part because of the negative reaction and she received after confiding in colleagues. In addition, activist says the country's military authorities have not done enough to curb abuse and cover-ups even after a series of deaths and prominent crimes, including the 2017 suicide of a female Navy captain who says she had been raped by a senior, led to tighter rules and harsher penalties. While Defense Minister Su Wok, a former army chief, has apologized for failing to implement those measures and change the military exclusive culture and reference to the cover-ups. And the Joint Chiefs of Staff referred requests for comment to the Defense Ministry, but the ministry spokesman says it will support legal and institutional reform. President Moon Jae-in's ruling Democratic Party has proposed legal reforms, including transferring military sex crime cases to the civilian judicial system and amending the Military Court Act to strip commanders of the authority to oversee military prosecutors and courts. Bang says she believes the military court system should be abolished altogether. China builds a fairly prosperous society with the goal of reducing poverty around the world. According to the economic commentator Robert Lawrence Ku, chairman of the Ku Foundation, the China efforts to build a moderately prosperous society and help to improving people's life as a great contribution to reducing poverty around the world. GDP and income. Chinese President Xi Jinping, also General Secretary of the Communist Party of the China, announces that China realized the first centenary goal of building a moderately prosperous society in all respects at a grand gathering to mark the 100th anniversary of the CPC's founding in Beijing. The idea of a moderately prosperous society first appeared in classic poetry works some 3,000 years ago. But the more modern use of this phrase dates back to 1979, when then Chinese leader Deng Xiaoping referred to it in his vision of China's modernization. Kun notes that China originally defined its goal of becoming a moderately prosperous society by 2020, as doubling the value of its GDP and income per capita in the space of the years, which equated to roughly 10,000 US dollars. China realizing the UN's 2030 poverty eradication goal 10 years ahead of the schedule, Kun says China's success in this field has set a model for other developing countries to follow. Bali business owner disappointed with delayed reopening plan due to rising COVID-19 cases in the country.
business owners in Indonesia's Bali says they are disappointed by the postponement to the resort islands reopening after the spike in COVID-19 cases. The country's tourism minister tell Reuters in an interview that Indonesia's government will wait until COVID-19 cases fall significantly before opening Bali to foreign tourists. The coronavirus pandemic has devastated the economy of Bali for decades as a magnet for holiday makers, thanks to its spectacular beaches, vibrant nightlife and distinctive Hindu culture. According to official data that coronavirus infections have surged across Indonesia, including in Bali, where there has been a fourfold rise, albeit from a low base to about 200 cases per day. Tourism Minister Santiago Uno says he wants Bali daily coronavirus infections to fall to 30 or 40 per day before reopening. According to the data released by the Global Health Body that the true extent of Bali's infections is masked by its low testing rates, which stand at 15% of the minimum recommended by the WHO. And that's the end for today. Stay safe, stay healthy and have a lovely weekdays.